So a few people have pointed out to me that while all this philosophizing is good fun and well and good, it is really a bit of nonsense there. It has no real importance. It is a bit of, you know, some people would even use the term mental masturbation. I have actually used it myself. And rightly so, I think. And in a good, in an important way, you could say that, yes, that is exactly the case. It certainly is the case that a lot of philosophizing that you see people indulge in is pointless arguing about minutiae of how to interpret things and of no practical importance. For example, looking at the nonsense that I was spouting yesterday about platonic reality and how Plato got it the wrong way around, you could argue, well, okay, fair enough, even if we grant you the points you were making yesterday, when it comes to using natural human language like English, okay, we can't pinpoint when we're using something as ambiguous as English what the margins of error could be, whereas if we're talking scientifically, we can measure margins of errors, we can actually tell you precisely how large a margin of error would be in a particular measurement or design of an application or something like that. But in English, we, we can't quantify margins of errors. And still, if I'm telling you something like, I'm sitting in this chair talking to you, making a video on YouTube and talking to you, then you can take that as fact, whatever the margins of error surrounding that statement might be, it isn't really that important. That is where we can be pragmatic about things and can say, listen, whatever the philosophical implications of all the things you were saying yesterday, when we're talking on a normal human level, we can just say you are, as if it's truth, you are sitting in this chair making this video, because within any reasonable margin of error, that is exactly what is happening here. So, is there a point to all this philosophizing then? Well, there is. But it might be in an indirect way. For example, let's look at this Platonic thing that I was talking about yesterday. And I will say to you that you need to understand this at a fundamental level if you ever want to be able to say that you really understand how evolution works. Because if you don't get what I was saying in my video yesterday, then you will not get the fact that an animal isn't always... You cannot look at an animal and say, this either is a dog or it is not a dog. That would be the dichotomous mindset that will trip you up, up if you're trying to think about evolution. And, as I've pointed out to a few people in comments, if, you, if I am yabbering about this too you know, confusingly, if I am not expressing what I'm trying to say here properly, maybe go and Google Richard Dawkins' article, Gaps in the Mind, because I'm sure he could explain it better than I ever could. But that is where philosophy meets practical implications. You need to understand it at that fundamental level before you can say that you actually understand evolution. And of course then, that has real life practical implications. Because if you really understand how evolution works, then we can really harness its potential and avoid its pitfalls. For example, when we're treating infectious diseases with antibiotics, for example. A real fundamental level of understanding of what evolution is and how it works helps avoiding the problems that we are experiencing with antibiotics becoming ineffective because we are prescribing them without really understanding what is happening, how bacteria evolve in order to become resistant to antibiotics. So, it isn't all just navel-gazing. It isn't all just pointless yabbering about minutiae that don't really matter. Quite often, yes it is. 
but not always. And it is still something that's worth doing, even if it's something that you only indulge in every once in a while.